Hello everybody. I want to tell you a few things that I remember uh, about weddings and baptisms that were practiced when I was growing up in the 40s and 50s in SCT. For the wedding, I remember love between the bridegroom and the bride for marriage was not necessary. If it happened, it was a coincidence. Was dr what driving the uh, wedding was uh, the marriage was the dowry. How much dowry and what kind of a dowry would the bride have? Anyway, no matter the way what happened was either one of the parents or a neighbor or someone would suggest, you know, you have a boy we have a girl, maybe we can put them together and uh, to a marriage. And after they kind of agreed then, they would start talking, negotiate, talk about the dowry. Customary was that minimum, they would offer him, they would build him a house. If they give him a piece of land, well, the groom can build the house. Now, you know, everything that was coming to the groom, he was the groom's uh, right only. If uh, all the dowry, he was his. If the marriage did not last, didn't go good, they separated, then the dowry stayed with the groom. So at least they would give him a house. Uh, then if it was farming, then they would give him a pair of oxes so he can plow the fields. And they would give him other animals, sometimes how many heads of uh, sheep, things like that. Uh, they would try to set him up for start his new life. But very important it was the money, the wealth, gold. Fluria, they call him Fluria, Fluria Lides. How many of those he had? Because that was the wealth, because there was no back and counts or anything like that. It was all in, in gold. So after they agreed, of course, they would get the, uh, the children and tell them, you guys are getting married. No, we don't want to. Uh, the, uh, the boy has some rights of refusal because he was a man and he can leave and can go do his own thing. But the girl had not much choice. Now the boy, before he gets married, he had to fulfill his military duties, which was every, every man. Uh, and he was, I remember it was two years in duty. So you would put him around 20, 21 years old that he would kind of be ready eligible for marriage. The girl age was not that important. Uh, so if they decide that yes, we, will, we get married, then they will have the engagement. The Aravones. The Aravones usually would take place in the girl's house and the priest will come over and bless the rings, the, the, the bands, the wedding bands, uh, then he'll put them on the left finger of the ring finger on the left hand. That was important. That's kind of uh, signified that they were engaged, not married, engaged. So after they had that ring on the fingers, they could go out and can hold hands and they can be like a normal couple without worrying about uh, uh, gossip about, you know, what they did and this and that. Anyway, so that's, uh, that was the engagement. You know, I said that uh, it's the love between the husband and the, or the uh, groom and the bride for marriage was not necessary, but uh, the love was still in the village and it was practiced underground, secretly. Uh, well, we had a, the road coming to the village, it was not paved, big road. At the evenings, when the weather was good, 
the girls would get together, groups of friends would get together, hold hands, and they walk back and forth on that road. The same thing for the boys, the young men. They get together, friends, they get together, uh, they put their rounds, them uh, boys, boys, girls, girls, not together, and they walk back and forth, of course, they talk about the girls, the girls talk about the boys, they see each other, they giggle, and uh, uh, they pass, sometimes they pass Aravasatya, Aravasatya is a piece of paper where they will write something uh, uh, and uh, maybe meet me later or things like that, Aravasatya. And they also sometimes they will use young boys, little boys, say so take this piece of paper and go to the, give it to this girl. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, then if they were in love or they were, they liked each other, they had to get together secretly at night. Nobody would see them. Because if somebody saw them, then there'll be gossip all around the village and you will be in trouble for your father and mother. So after the engagement, they would set the, uh, the day for the wedding. Now the wedding, normally would be a three-day affair. And during the, the Lent, the 40-day Lent before Easter, there will be no weddings. And normally the weddings will take place in the spring because um, in the summer they were all busy out in the fields. There was no hard time for weddings. Either it would be in the spring or in the fall. Uh, winter was too cold for any celebrations like that. So they would set the date, and uh, if it was in the spring, normally it would happen uh, to Thoma, the Sunday after Easter. Uh, that's what normally would uh, have a lot of weddings. It was a three-day affair, and they didn't have, if I remember, they didn't have any bachelor parties, uh, parties Nothing like that, but they had one celebration where they were shaving and cleaning the the groom, his friends. They were all men. I've never been in one of them, so I heard they was happening. Uh, the day, the the day of uh, Saturday before the wedding, they would prepare the bedroom, the house, and the bedroom of the uh, where the couple would spend the first night, of course, for the. And the rest of their lives, and uh, in there they would have uh, the prika. Prika, how many sheets does she have? What kind of sheets are they? How many paplomata, uh, pillows, uh, socks, all the clothing that the normally would prepare by the uh, the bride's family, and uh, they would also. Uh, set the bed and they have a nice cover on, on it well all clean and uh, they would throw rice on it spread rice on, on, on the bed of course to have many children but what was, was important and interesting they would get a little boy and throw him on the bed and roll him up and down throw him up and down and that was for luck good luck to have boys, they didn't want girls. They didn't want girls because girls were take. They had a, to, to get married. They had a dowry, and if you didn't have dowry, you probably would never get married. So it was a, a mandatory the dowry. And many times I, I heard, and I know it's practice. Uh, if they had a brother, he would not get married, even though he was older, until his sister or sisters were married. And he would go um, in America or Canada or someplace to work and send money back to build up her dowry. Anyway, so but uh, <clears throat> they uh, they did have the work. The uh, the groom was wearing uh, suits, and uh, uh, the uh, bride had a gown. They had wedding gowns that. Uh, my mother used to sew all the wedding gowns of the village and the villages around. I remember they had a gold thread. It was, a, it's, it was metal, thread, gold, 
And uh, I remember they would take it with the, the, the nails, pull it down, and that thing will curl. And they wear it on the hair, on the head, uh, lapels, anywhere. It was a gold thing. So the day, the, the day of the wedding, the groom will come to the bride's house and take her and go to church together and get married. Now, one that I remember very vividly, this happened, uh, the, uh, the bride was our neighbor and the groom, groom, I don't remember where he lived, but uh, on Sunday he came in, he was on a white horse. In front of him, there were uh, musicians. Uh, it was somebody playing the violin, a clarinet, a uti, and a santuri. And they were singing wedding songs and uh, the rest of the, almost the whole village was following behind them. And they went to the uh, bride's house. I do not remember whether he put it on a horse or they walked together by any way with the instruments playing and going to church. After that, they, they go inside, they have the, uh, the wedding and the, the people who play the music go directly after the, directly to the platea and uh, then when the, when the thing was over, they will start dancing all night long. But uh, one of the things that hap was happening in the ceremony is the priest would take the veras or the, uh, the wedding bands from the left fingers and put it on the right finger. That was officially getting married. And if you saw someone in the street that they had a, a wedding band on the left finger, means they were engaged. If they had it on the right, means they were married. Now, of course, there were food, plenty of food, and it would pr be prepared by the, uh, uh, the bride's uh, family and the neighbors. They all contributed. Anyway, this is what I remember about the weddings. Now, about the baptism, you know, once they get married, uh, the whole village will count in the months. And if she was not pregnant in nine months, oh, something wrong. <laughs> something wrong there. And when once you get pregnant, everybody would take care of a pregnant woman. They would uh, put filachta uh, to warn the evil eyes so she would keep the baby. She wouldn't go out too many, uh, too, too many times. They would stay in the house. Uh, the other thing is if she were going by and somebody was cooking and smelled good, they would go out and take her, bring her in to give her something to eat from what they were cooking because uh, they were afraid that if she didn't taste, eat some of this, then she may lose the baby. That was very important, very important. And you know, by the way, they were doing the same thing for the boys. If the boy went by and he said, oh, that smells good, they had to give him something because they said if he didn't, then he may not have children. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, that's what they were doing. So after the child was born, of course, the birth was uh, uh, performed by the mami, the midwife. And uh, they would, uh, after the baby was born, of course, they would, uh, same thing. They put filactao, the baby, and they wouldn't go out for 40 days. And 40 days, after the 40 days, they would go to church, and after that, they could go out in the neighborhood uh, anywhere. But before that, they would not go out. They'd be inside the house. And they would uh, put fasces, the wrapping in cloth, like, uh, like the, uh, the mummies in Egypt. <laughs> I remember if they take all the, the, all the wrapping around them, the kids will start kicking and uh, they will hold the, the they said, oh no, no, maybe, maybe they get hurt if he kicks like that. That was the thing. Anyway, but they would take the arms, they go like this, back and forth for the exercise. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah, but they'll wrap him again. And uh, 
I can't remember when they were rubbing come out. Maybe after 40 days, I don't know. Anyway, the, uh, the baptism was uh, very important because uh, really the child did not have identity until he or she was baptized. Had no name. The name was given at the christening, not at birth. And he was called uh, babies for the boys, beba for girl. Now they had no name. Huh? Uh, and also, if anything happened to them, they passed away, they wouldn't go to church because they were not baptized, they were not Christians. They would just bury him somewhere uh, without any ceremonies. So they would try to, to baptize him uh, quickly. Now in my case, I was baptized later. I was like three years old and because they were waiting for my uncle Ilya to come from America in the 1939-40 and then the war was broke out and he couldn't come. So they were waiting, but anyway, one of the relatives, uh, I don't remember, was uh, Nuna. She was a um, sister of my grandmother or something like that. Anyway, uh, I don't know, because I was old, uh, I was afraid of the baptism. I know when they baptized uh, Teddy, uh, I was never, didn't go near there. I was way out. But my, my, uh, <clears throat> when they baptized me, I remember uh, I walked, of course I had my new clothes, I walked to the neighbor, uh, Kutsuyani, his name was Kutsuyani. And uh, he was asking me, what did they name you? Ilya, I said, Ilya, don't know in Ilyas. I remember that. Uh, but the uh, name, of the child to be baptized was given by the Nuno, and he had the right to choose the name. Customary though was that the first child who belonged uh, to the uh, father, he would choose the name, normally his, his father's or his mother's name. Anyway, but many times the uh, Nuno would change the name there were many instances like that. He would just use his father's name or his grandfather's. That name belonged to him. Uh, and when it was time to baptize, the first choice would be given to the Kubaro. The, uh, the best men of the wedding, they were offered to him to baptize the child. And if he didn't want to or something, then they would choose a friend or a family or someone else. Yeah. But because the name and normally uh, the parents were not present at the baptism. If the baptism was going to be in the house, they had to leave the house. They were not there. They go to somebody else's house, the neighbors. If it was going to be a church, they would stay in the house. But uh, because supposedly they did not know the name of the child until the uh, godfather pronounced it, in church at the ceremony or at the house at the ceremony, they did not know the name. So we children will gather around and wait to hear the name. As soon as the the priest and the uh, the Nuno said the name, we run to go bring the news to his parents. And of course, we will qualified for money. And the first guy got the most money. Oh, we were running like crazy. Anyway, so these are the things I remember about uh, weddings and baptisms at that time. Of course, things change now. I think they do something different. You know, they, they, uh, the religious uh, wedding is not mandatory to be registered. They register only the civil, they have a civil wedding now, which is with the, the accepted uh, uh, wedding to join the people and they have, uh, that goes into the books and starts from there. I know, happened a couple of times when I was over there, they would have a baptism 
of the child and the wedding of the parents the same day. What was happening is they would have the civil wedding and then they will live together when they have the child they decide okay we're going to baptism and and I don't, i'm not sure that if you are not make religiously married you can baptize a child i'm not sure of that anyway this day remember bye bye love you all guys bye bye